oh hey hello welcome back or welcome for the first time my name is jody and i run this book tube youtube channel fandango yes so welcome <laughs> i haven't reviewed books in a while or at least not in the format where i sit down and talk about a bunch of books so i thought i would do that today i wanted to review some books that I read at the end of May, but I didn't talk about them in my May book review because I, I ended up reading them after I posted that video. So these are the books that I completely ate up. I like binge them either in one sitting or within three days. Also, weirdly enough, binging a book doesn't necessarily mean you loved it. It could mean that you absolutely love the story and you couldn't put the book down but it can also mean that you were reading it just to get to the end so you could get it over with and that was one of those books on this list but we will get to that later so yeah enjoy this video of the books that i binged recently the first book that i truly binged at the end of last month was the Silence, Silent, the, the Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides. Michael, what? Author Alex Michaelides. Alex Michaelides. I had to YouTube video his name pronunciation. Interesting that someone posted a YouTube video of how to pronounce his name, but I'm I'm glad they did. So, the book I read in one sitting is The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides. I definitely think I'm late to the game on this one. I've seen this posted a lot, recommended a lot on Reddit and Instagram and YouTube as one of the most interesting thriller novels. Yeah, just recently read it because my friend Christine recommended it to me and Sammy as a book that she sat down to read and didn't move from the couch until she finished it. She also binged this book in one sitting. That made it very promising and enticing. The Silent Patient is a thriller mystery novel that follows a artist who has a great relationship with her husband, but suddenly she shoots her husband and kills him she murders her husband and she's put in a mental asylum and after that incident she never speaks again she's the silent patient cue in our narrator his name is theo and he is a criminal psychoanalyst he is captivated by alicia's story and decides to work at the facility that alicia is staying at to see if he can figure out the truth behind the murder and also to see if she will speak again and confess to her murder. This story was incredibly gripping and the writing was very easy to read. What makes thriller slash mystery novels so great is the mystery and trying to figure out the truth behind the mystery. So I don't want to give away too much about this book. I'll just talk about my experience. This book is very much a page turner fascinating story twisty and turny and very very fun very fun to read you just keep yeah wanting to find out why 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 like why did she kill her husband like what what was the motive i believe this doesn't have a great reception amongst really advanced thriller readers i do see that complaint a lot on subreddits about the silent patient but it's actually a great like introduction into thriller mysteries especially if you're not a typical reader of that genre like i personally really enjoyed it and sammy really enjoyed it if you're in a reading slump this is a really good book to pick up because of its pacing it's very fast paced you will fly through it i recommended this book to para so i might lend this book to my friend who doesn't read very often but likes drama because this book has a lot of drama and a lot of interesting things happening. If you're not an avid reader, this is a book that I would recommend. Personally, I really enjoyed this and I really enjoyed watching my boyfriend Sammy read this because I liked seeing his reaction towards the end of the book. The second book I binged is The Orange and Other Poems by Wendy Cope. 
I don't know if you can count this, but I count this as binging because I had told myself that I would pace myself with this book, that I would read one poem a night, but then I ended up reading all the poems after the first night. <laughs> I read this little book of poetry in two nights. I don't know much about poetry, but all of the poems that Wendy Cope wrote in this little book was just so beautiful and so poignant and so touching. I think the description inside this book sums up the collection perfectly. It's described as, in poems that are sometimes laugh out loud, funny, and sometimes very moving, Wendy Cope offers reflections on love and life, from the joy of falling and being in love to the pain of breaking up, from memories of people loved and lost to the small moments that make life worth living. This is a book you'll want to savor and share with all your friends. Also, the cover is so beautiful. Although the poems, literally all the poems in this book are very short, they really pack the punch with just emotion. You might think that rhyming in poetry is very cheesy because there were a couple rhyming lines in this, but I thought it was very well done. Like I didn't think it was cheesy at all. All the poems were written in a really touching, impactful way. I think this would make a really good gift for friends or just a really small book to keep in your collection and return to from time to time. It was just really nice really nice book of poetry and poems and this definitely made me want to pick up more poetry in the future so who knows maybe I'll pick up more of her works. The third book that I binged was Educated a Memoir by Tara Westover. I've been on a memoir craze lately. I've been loving memoirs. This one I was really excited to pick up but also really enjoyed. This was great in terms of how powerful the story was, her experience, and just the message that it conveyed. Educated recounts Tara Westover's life growing up in a survivalist Mormon family without a formal education, and because of her upbringing, she lives in a life slash world that is very secluded and isolated in terms of her knowledge of the world and modern, even modern society. Her father didn't believe in things like hospitals, going to hospitals, modern medicine, education. And there are parts in the book where I would just get so angry at her parents for the situations they put their children through. It was absolutely batshit crazy. But I think that's exactly what drew me to her story is just wanting to understand how she eventually escaped that life and that reality by pursuing education. How did her mind change and how did her view of her family change is really what compelled me to continue reading her story and her experience. Overall, this book was extremely moving and well-written. She wrote her story and experience in such a raw and honest way. I really love the main message of this book, which is about the transformative power of education. Her journey showcases how education can open doors to new opportunities and ways of thinking. Yeah, I don't usually annotate books, but there was so many well-written lines and reoccurring themes um, regarding the power of education, curiosity, pursuit of knowledge, and um, conflict of identity and contradictions. If you're looking for a memoir that will stay with you long after you finish reading it, Educated is an excellent choice. So I was not sure if I wanted to talk about this book because I did binge it, but I didn't particularly enjoy it. But I'll talk about it anyway since it is a book that I did read recently and I want to share my thoughts on it. This book is Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood and I don't have the book right now. I lent it to my friend N, who has been loving romance books lately. Just because I don't like a book doesn't mean that my friends or you might not like the book. So maybe she'll come back and say that she loved it but I personally did not enjoy the book. This is my second Ali Hazelwood book. I read The Love Hypothesis a few months ago. That one is not YA. <laughs> that one is quite spicy and so I was looking for something wholesome and sweet and heartfelt. Christine recommended this to me as a young adult 
fiction uh, book that Allie Hazelwood wrote. So I was like, oh great, I'll pick this up. Maybe it'll give me those little butterflies. And it did not give me any <laughs> emotional value. I was entertained with the plot and the premise of the story, but at times I felt like it was very boring and repetitive. If I could compare it to a modern day film, it reminded me a lot of The Queen's Gambit, but Gen Z-ified. Lots of Gen Z cultural references in the book. Overall, it's a very fun book, but I feel like it didn't provide me anything memorable. I thought the romance wasn't that great. I just didn't feel like the two characters had any chemistry, and I just felt myself getting kind of bored at times. The book is about a girl, she's I think an 18 year old named Mallory Greenleaf, and she is a chess prodigy. She is really good at chess, but she gives up chess at a young age due to a family tragedy. And then she reluctantly joins a chess competition due to the begging of her friend. And this is where she beats the number one chess champion in the world, who is also going to be our male protagonist and love interest, Nolan Sawyer. It goes through kind of her chess journey, like re-entering the chess world as a young adult and the interactions between her and Nolan as they cross paths. Honestly, like the concept and the topic of chess was really fun, but I don't know, the story ended up being not that interesting, unfortunately. I feel like there are better young adult novels to explore out there that, yeah. All right, so those were some of the books that I binged recently. Some of them were really good and some of them were meh. Let me know in the comments if there are any books that you've binged recently or in your lifetime and maybe if you've read some of these books and liked or disliked them. And yeah, like always, thanks for watching and see you on the next one. Bye.